Hey friends, in this video we are going to study about GPCR nitric oxide signaling. The nitric oxide is a paracrine signaling molecule which helps in vasodilation. In the previous video I have explained you the working and theory of nitric oxide and nitric oxide is a ligand. It's a very uh, unstable gas which is formed from arginine amino acid and it helps in vasodilation. So the signaling of NO occurs with the help of G protein coupled receptor. In order to understand nitric oxide signaling, first of all we need to know the blood vessels. We know this nitric oxide actually acts on the blood vessels and helps in vasodilation. This lumen in which the blood is carried gets widened due to the nitric oxide signaling. We see that this blood vessel is formed of three different layers. This is the lumen in which the blood is present and actually carried through this portion. It's a, it's a kind of space in which the blood is present. And this lumen is actually covered by three layers. The innermost layer is called as the endothelial cell layers. This innermost layer is the endothelial cell layers. Now next to it is the smooth muscle wall which is the middle layer and the outermost layer is the blood vessel wall. So this blood vessel wall, smooth muscle wall and endothelial cell layers they compose the blood vessels. This In this whole of the layers nitric oxide signaling occurs for the vasodilation. First of all if I tell you this story in short what happens is that in blood vessel wall we have neurons. And these neurons transmit or produce neurotransmitters such as acetylcholine. And these neurotransmitters like acetylcholine get transferred to the innermost layer of endothelial cells. So these acetylene, uh, acetylcholine neurotransmitter gets tra uh, transported to the endothelial cells. Now the transportation of acetylcholine to the endothelial cells produces nitric oxide. And the nitric oxide which is a very unstable gas and a paracrine signaling molecule get transferred to the smooth muscle wall. So the nitric oxide gas diffuses in the smooth muscle wall and here it helps in the vasodilation and muscle relaxation of this wall due to which the lumen of the blood vessel gets wide and the blood is carried through it. So this is how vasodilation occurs with the help of nitric oxide signaling. Now let's start with the uh, actual signaling process. So first of all, let's consider this as an endothelial cell. Over here we can see from this to this, we have endothelial cell. This whole is an endothelial cell. This whole is an endothelial cell and next to it is the smooth muscle wall. So this endothelial cell and this is a smooth muscle wall. And here we see the signaling over here and here. So let's consider first of all, this is the endothelial cell and the plasma membrane of endothelial cell is having a GPCR which is G protein coupled receptor. Now since we know about GPCR and we have studied so many pathways of GPCR already which includes the uh, PLC signaling and CAMPPK signaling. So from these videos you may have got to know that GPCR is a uh, it's a kind of receptor which is having a 7 transmembrane alpha helix and there are 3 trimeric heterotrimeric subunits of G proteins which are associated with this receptor. Now as we seen that the acetylcholine which is a neurotransmitter or a ligand as it binds to the end terminal of GPCR we see that this alpha subunit of G protein gets activated. The GDP which is attached in the inactive form gets removed and instead of GTP, GTP gets attached. So this GTP attaching to the alpha subunit activates it because of the GEF activity which is guanine nucleotide exchange factor. C terminal acts as GEF and helps in the removal of GDP and attachment of GTP in order to activate this alpha subunit of GPCR. Now as alpha subunit gets activated, it gets dissociated. This alpha subunit gets dissociated and beta gamma exists as a dimer and all of this complex are dissociated from each other. Now this alpha subunit which is activated gets attached with the effector molecule. In this case the effector molecule is phospholipase. So PLC is phospholipase which is the effector molecule and this activated unit converts PIP2 into IP3. PIP2 in the plasma membrane uh, is the phosphatidylinositol 4,5 biphosphate. It's a chemical 
on which PLC as active unit attacks and converts it into IP3. Now IP3 is hydrophilic molecule. It is, uh, it is present in the cy uh, cytoplasm. IP3 is inositol 3,4,5-triphosphate. It's a second messenger which is produced in response to the primary messenger and the primary messenger over here is acetylcholine. Now this IP3 as we have studied this pathway, the similar pathway in the DAG IP3 pathway or PLC beta signaling that you may have seen in the GPCR signaling, this pathway is also very similar to that pathway. So we have seen now IP3 as a second messenger has formed. Now this IP3 will move towards the rough endoplasmic reticulum which is rich in calcium ions. Now this IP3 gets attached to a channel which is called IP3 gated calcium ion channel. This IP3 gated calcium ion channel now gets open after the attachment of IP3 and lots of calcium ions gets released from the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Now, the calcium as released in the cytoplasm increases the concentration of calcium in the cytoplasm and calcium is also a second messenger. This second messenger is formed due to the IP3 and also from the uh, acetylcholine as a ligand. So calcium also in this pathway act as a second messenger and similarly in the, uh, just like the previous pathway, this calcium binds to its uh, calcium binding protein called escalmodulin and after that this complex gets binded to a CAM kinase. So calcium, calmodulin and CAM kinase, this triple C or CCC complex can activate any kind of protein in the cytoplasm. Now this complex will activate an enzyme called as NO synthase that is nitric oxide synthase. Now this will phosphorylate nitric oxide synthase which means that this CCC complex will activate nitric oxide synthase and due to activation of nitric oxide synthase, this active unit converts arginine amino acid into nitric oxide gas and citrulline. We have nothing to do with citrulline over here, but we are focusing over here nitric oxide which is a unstable paracrine signaling molecule gas. So this arginine amino acid with the help of nitric uh, nitric oxide synthase which have been activated due to the CCC complex gets converted into nitric oxide gas and citrulline. This nitric oxide gas being, being unstable gets diffused into the smooth muscle wall. Now here we can see this nitric oxide gas after its formation it diffuses into smooth, smooth muscle walls and in the smooth muscle wall it will actually activate or attack the heme group of guanyl cyclase. The nitric oxide gas in the smooth muscle activate guanyl cyclase by attacking its heme group. Heme group pe jaake attack karke guanyl cyclase ko activate karta hai. And this activated guanyl cyclase converts the GMP into cyclic GMP. Normal guanyl monophosphate into cyclic guanyl monophosphate. The cyclic guanyl monophosphate is also a second messenger. And this second messenger activates PKG. PKG is protein kinase G represents GMP. So this activated PKG helps in the vasodilation of the lumen due to which the lumen of the blood vessels get widened and blood flows through it more easily or in a heavy amount, in a larger density due to which vasodilation occurs and this is the reason for penile erection and so many medicines such as nitroglycerin is, form, is made on this signaling. So nitroglycerin जो है heart attack में uh, heart की uh, treatment में काफी use होती है medicine वो भी इसी formula पे based है कि nitroglycerin जो है nitric oxide gas में convert हो जाती है जो कि vasodilation करवाती है smooth muscles की जिसके कारण human wide हो जाता है और blood उसमें से flow करता है so this is how nitric oxide signaling occurs with the help of GPCR. Although over here we can see this nitric oxide gas which is acting as a ligand doesn't require any kind of receptor but its synthesis requires GPCR. We know that nitric oxide synthesis somehow the precursors, the precursor which is required is GPCR and the ligand over here is acetylcholine which is the neurotransmitter released from the blood vessel wall. So this is all about GPCR nitric oxide signaling. In case you want the notes of this uh, topic you may simply comment down in the comment section and I will provide you notes also. And do refer the previous, uh, previous videos also because I have made 
टू टू थ्री मोर वीडियोज ऑफ जी पी सी आर सिग्नलिंग विच इज़ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड ऑल्सो द इंट्रोडक्टरी पार्ट ऑफ वॉट इज जी पी सी आर बिकॉज इट इज़ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू नो द बेसिक्स ऑफ जी पी सी आर बिफोर स्टडिंग इट्स सिग्नलिंग सो आई होप दैट यू लाइक दिस वीडियो इन इफ यू डेट दैन प्लीज डोट फर गेट टू लाइक सब्सक्राइब शेयर कमेंट